Good morning. Good morning, family. This is Cynthia Johnson. You're listening to 15 Minutes of Politics with Cynthia A. Johnson. And my guest host is Joyce Moore. You're listening to us on Gospel 1440, WMKM Reborn, formerly WDRJ. I'm so glad to have you. We are a couple of days after the election after the election as you all know i was a write-in candidate and we were not as successful if you would like to believe the detroit election department as we would have liked uh let me just tell you that according to the records according to what i looked at yesterday from the detroit election uh, department was that Fred Durhall the third who does not live in our district overwhelmingly won the election as state representative uh, but he did not win that election based on his merits it's really unfortunate we and we have to do a lot of teaching training informing and getting people really involved in the election process oh, don't you agree First Joyce all, good morning good morning I'm yeah, sorry that's darling that's okay yeah, that's I'm okay. sorry you're enthusiastic that's fine I'm used to it by now <laughs> <laughs> that's not a problem. but anyway uh, yes we need to get people more involved in the election process and we need to organize more groups in terms of letting them know um, not just the process, the actual process of voting, meaning that the primary is the most important election. People think that the general is, when in fact the primary is. Yes, and, and we've said this over and over, uh, that the primary is so very important because during the primary is the time that... The candidate. For the candidate right. of your choice gets the opportunity to get your vote and that in the case of the state representative if you if you don't come out and vote and you're waiting to vote for that person in the general election that person may not make it so what happened was is that Fred Durhaw again who does not live in our district we didn't know it at the time but we know it now um, he Fred Durhaw the third, the third well, his name is Fred Durhall on the Well, was. Fred Durhall on the ballot. It's Fred Durhall III and it's Fred Durhall Jr. on the license. Oh, it's Frederick Charles yeah, Durhall right. Jr. on the license, right. who is actually the third. And the father's name on his license is also Frederick Charles Durhall Jr. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Is that right? That's right. Okay. So what happened was is that, like I said, he overwhelmingly won the election. Now, I was just curious and wanted to go to, to the election department, the Detroit election department yesterday. Yesterday being November 5th, right? Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Day after the election, yeah. right? right? Okay. Right. So according to the Detroit Election Commission, the 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 results, although unofficial, unofficial, uh, was supposed to be one hundred percent, right? One hundred percent. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> when I went there, I went to the Detroit Election Commission on the boulevard. On the boulevard. And I have asked people to make sure you get your voting record. When I went there, it was with the purpose of doing two things. One, I wanted to find out exactly how many write-in votes that I personally received. Well, you have to understand, this is not just an issue with you in this election. 
this has been an ongoing issue. With okay, the okay, candidates. okay, but okay. And you're right. You're and, absolutely right. They don't count them individually. Well, wait a minute. Let's okay. not go fast. Oh, okay. okay. I, I, yeah, I want to break this down okay. so people will really okay. get a flavor of what yes, is going, going on and right. what has been going on in the city of Detroit. And we need the FBI to investigate. I'm telling you. The FBI needs to come inside of this city. The Attorney General needs to come inside this city and check out exactly what is going on. I'll tell you, there were some really interesting things that went on the day of election. But let me get back to okay. November the 5th. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me get back to November 5th, yesterday. First... The supervisor at the department told me when I asked for a list of all of my write-in votes, she said, we haven't even started counting the votes, the write-in votes. Excuse me, there is a number on the list showing that the write-ins received 0.99% of the vote. 125 votes, according to the unofficial report. Where did that number come from? She says, well, that's something you have to speak with uh, another supervisor, Miss Avery. Okay. I, but she's not in. Excuse me? Okay, so second issue. <laughs> second issue. Been there. I wanted to get a copy of my voting record, right? right? right. A day after the election. Absolutely, I understand where you're coming from. When I asked for the copy of my voting record, do you know they tried not to give it to me? Instead, there were there was the supervisor and the new employee who were huddling together looking at this record and they were sitting at a desk trying to do something and I'm, they asked me to have a seat but of course you know me, I didn't have a seat, I'm looking and while I'm looking there's another employee who gets in front of me attempting to block me from seeing whatever it is that they're doing but it didn't work because I kept stepping to the side uh, and so I finally said to the supervisor, Supervisor, Miss Bell, I just want my voting record. Because I saw that they were typing something. She says, well, it was like 425. Don't you want this? Uh, don't you want this certificate? Certificate for what? I just came in here for my voting record. She says, well, I, I don't know if we can give you that. Excuse me, when they finally, after a whole 20 minutes later, when they finally gave me my voting record after the supervisor went upstairs, came back downstairs because she said that she needed to speak with the supervisor or she needed to speak to management upstairs, she finally gave it to me. And now I realize why she did not, why, what all this was all about. When I looked at my voting record, not only did it show that I did not vote in November 2011, which I did, I was a write-in for school board, but it didn't show that I voted. It also did not show, guess what? Did you vote in this that I did not vote on November 4th. And I was a write-in candidate and I definitely voted. And I was voter number 96. All right, I just wanted to share that with you. I know this 15 minutes goes fast, but there is some very important information that Joyce Moore must share with the rest of us. Look, Go on, you, Joyce. Yeah, I appreciate that. You're 15 welcome. 15 minutes went by fast. Oh, my God, At yes. any rate, I went to one of the meetings last night in regard to the $3 million. I went to Carl, I mean, Crow, Crowell, Crowell Recreational Center on Lasher. 
And uh, one of the ladies asked me, she says, what can you, what can we do? So when I walked in, I was amazed that people knew who I was, but they do, because you know what, this is a very uh, passionate issue with me, but also it tells us that people, there's a need for people. At any rate, because we have the time frame, what I'm asking you to do, and this will be on, on uh, Cynthia's um, uh, website. Um, um, Not website, but Facebook page. Facebook, okay, good. Facebook, thank you. I need you to draft, read this letter, and I'm going to read it quickly. I want you to uh, put your name at the top, put the date, address uh, to elected officials, and I want you to say, Dear elected official, I am a resident and voter in the city of Detroit. The community block grant funds for low to moderate income were initially intended as a grant for the residents in the city of Detroit. I'm re requesting that you encourage house urban, uh, housing urban development, which is HUD, to insist that the $3 million that Mayor Mike Duggan uh, reprogram as a loan, effective November the 1st, 2014, be immediately redirected back to CDBG funds as a grant as it was initially or originally intended. Your immediate actions, I mean, skip a line, your immediate actions and response is greatly appreciated. Now, I want this letter to go out to the mayor, state representatives, state senators, your federal um, uh, representatives, city council, the council member in your district, and the president of the United States. It's only because of the fact that they think we're not doing anything. We did it before, so back to Cynthia. All right, so this letter is going to be on my Facebook page, uh, Cynthia A. Johnson. And can we play It Ain't Over? Absolutely. Can, can we play that? Absolutely. Get to that, Please. that portion of It Ain't Over. Plan B. <laughs> there are other plans. Oh, yes. Because we have to make sure that people know that you just don't lay down and accept anything. This is Cynthia A. Johnson, my co-host is Joyce Moore. You've been listening to us on 15 Minutes of Politics with Cynthia A. Johnson. This is Gospel 1440 WMKM Reborn, formerly WDRJ. God bless you. It ain't over. Thank you.